Okay, time to take out the V4 Optical Fiber Fusion Splicer. So that's cool, it actually comes with a very nice case. Nice and cushioned too, all the way around. Okay. So there is the splicer, nice and bright. These are actually soft rubber keys on here too, so that's very nice. Interesting, it actually has a quarter 20 mount on the bottom. We've got a spot for the battery, and we've got the battery in here, I'm guessing. Yep, so it's a three and a half amp hour and 11.1 .1 volts. So this is the compartment that's gonna heat up for the heat shrink so that we can do the whole project without having to pull out a heat gun. And then there is the splicing head. Cool, nice magnetic contacts, nice sharp points on there. And if you look close, you can actually see there are spots on there to hold the fiber in place. Pretty cool. I really like all of the cushion on here. Wow, so standard fiber strippers, but they have very, very cushiony grip on here. So that is nice. So we got our three levels in there and a very nice springy action to it. And we have our stop right there to make sure that we're not going too far. We got our power cord. We got our power supply. So this is good for 100 to 240 volts. So it's good for international or domestic. It outputs five amps at 13.5 volts. So that's cool. So that will plug in right there. So if you don't want to use the battery, if you just want to use this thing in a shop, you can still do that with this. But as you're going to be probably doing most of your fiber splicing in the field, it is nice to have that battery option. We also have our fiber testing ports right there. So that is nice. That's something you don't get with every splicer. We got a little alcohol sprayer. Whenever you're going to be cleaning that fiber off, you want to use some isopropyl alcohol. And it's nice we've got a little container over here so you don't have to carry around a big bottle. Ooh, hey, that's cool. Looks like we have a choice of strippers here. So this one you're still going to need for doing that final cleaning. But with this, you can put the fiber in there. You can see we got that gauge in the bottom. So you can set that to whatever length that you want. And then just press and pull the fiber out. And that'll pull off that exact length of insulation. So that is really cool. That's nice. I've actually wanted to try one of these. You got a duster bulb. Cool. And it comes with our cleaver. So the most important part of getting a good connection is getting a proper cleave. So it is very nice that they actually got one of these in here. We got our instructions for it. And I like this little case that we got. That's cool. And then in the front of the case, we got our strap. And it looks like our instructions are right up here in the top. Cool. We got lots of pictures too, so that's good. And it says we should have a cooling tray. Yes. Okay, cool. So basically, whenever you get done with that heat shrink, you want to have a spot to put it. So we got this right here. I'm going to set that down, put that heat shrink inside of it. And it does say that if we plug in the power cord, that that will also charge the battery. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we do got a light on the power supply whenever we plug that in. There we go. So we are charging. And it looks like we actually got a test indicator here on the battery itself. And so it comes with three bars of charge out of five. So if I press the power button, that'll turn her on. So this is interesting. We can actually set the behavior that we want out of this. So these two are for enter splice mode. This one says don't remind again. This one says remind later. So if we want to change our decision, we can do that. Or we can just enter arc. So I'm going to do remind again. Cool. All right. Place fiber. All right, let's go ahead and wait on that. So press and hold. Let's see about testing our fiber. So I have a 15 meter fiber cable right here. So I'm just going to press that in here and in there. Going to red laser. It says red laser is on, do not stare. Yeah, so that's cool. So we can actually use that for testing to make sure that this is working. Okay, and off. Oh, we also have flicker. It's interesting, let's check that out. Okay, cool. So if we need to diagnose, like maybe we have a bunch of optical cables and we're not really sure which one is which, we can use that to visually check to make sure that we're looking at the correct one. So that is cool. So we can change the wavelength, we can change the composition. Function. Okay, so we got a reset waiting time, 10 seconds. Oh, this is cool. So it actually has a tension test. To my understanding, most splicers don't actually have that. But what that's gonna do is whenever it gets done splicing, it's going to test it to make sure it doesn't break apart when it's done. So that is cool. We got auto heating, arc compensation, force, USB power. I didn't know I could do that. Light switch. Cool. Yeah, tons of options in here. Heating program number four. So it starts on four, which is a 60 millimeter, which is exactly what I got. So these heat shrinks, they come in different lengths. This one is a 60 millimeter long. Casing diameter, four millimeter. These have an outer diameter of 2.6. So let's go ahead and set that. Let's call it three, that's fine. And we can set the heating temperature. So this is supposed to heat at, hmm, well, it doesn't say, so we'll just go ahead and stick with the 200 degrees. 200 degrees Celsius is quite hot. And then we can also give it a heating time. So 25 seconds, we'll just go with that. We'll go with the default. And then splice mode. So the fiber type. So we have options between SM, 
MM50, MM62.5, NZDS, DS, BI, UBI, COS, EDF, and back to SM. That is a ton. So if we look at this cable, we can see that is an SM. So we're going to keep that on SM. Splice operate mode auto. Yeah, let's just go ahead and use that. Clean arc time, 120 milliseconds. Surface angle threshold, 3 degrees. Cutting angle, 1 degrees. Align offset, 0.4 UM. Oh, you can actually align it by core or by, well, it says fine. Cladding align, core line. Wow, that's actually, this, this thing has a lot of features. This is a very nice little splicer. And back. All right. So this wants to splice. Let's go ahead. You know, I'm curious if I shut this off, is it going to save that? It did. Okay, cool. So that means every time we shut this thing off and turn it back on, it's going to be right where it was. If we're doing the same type of fiber over and over, every time we turn it on, it's going to be right where we want it to be. So that is excellent. So normally what you're going to be doing with this is you're going to be using this to put on pigtails. And I am just going to see how well this thing will splice cable by itself. So I'm going to pull this guy back a ways. This is more than enough. So you can see I've got plenty on here and I need to have about 30 millimeters. So we want to do this in steps because we don't want to damage it. Okay, so now we have our fiber, but it has a little bit of cladding on it. So we're going to use that final slot and drag it across. I'm going to use some Kimtech wipes with some 99% isopropyl alcohol. And we want to listen for a squeak. There we go. So that's how we know it is clean. Okay. So for the cleaver, you can see we got our blade right there in the middle. And this does not move back and forth as it is. If we open this up and open this up has a nice strong magnet on it then we can move it back and forth you can see that blade in there and that blade is designed to be able to be rotated so if this thing ever wears out we can get a nice cutting surface again we got a scale on there so we want to make sure we line the fiber up with that and then we're going to close down this jaw which will hold it in place this needs to be back drop that down and then we push it forward that cleaves the fiber i'm going to place the fiber in there and i want to set it so that the insulation starts at 15 millimeters so i'm just using that little gauge right there and drop it down. You can also see that there is two pads right here. So the fiber is going across both pads. So when this cover drops down, it's going to be pinching it between those two pads. And now we cleave. We lift it back up. That comes right off. We want to be very careful with that because this is glass. We cannot pull that out with a magnet. Basically, if that goes into your body, you need to go to the doctor. And now we've got our perfect 15 millimeter cleave. So now we can put that in here don't want to touch anything with our fingers and we want to lay everything down so that it's nice and straight and flat okay so now we'll do the same thing with the other side and we'll put that in over there now before i go stripping this down i am going to put the heat shrink on because i don't want to go through the whole process and then have to start over because i didn't put this on Okay, let's see how we did. Ooh, so these one, this one. Core on the right is dirty. So this is actually very good. You can actually see on here where the nastiness happened on the right side. It says core on the right is dirty. So let's go ahead and redo that one. I love that it has that on there because we do not want to be making bad splices. There we go. Look at that. That is a beautiful clean splice. That does not get much cleaner than that. That is awesome. I do still want to be careful with this. I mean, it's not incredibly fragile, but we don't want to just be yanking on it. We're going to put our heat shrink over it. 
There we go. We'll drop it in the heating tray. And off we go. So we heard the beep. Check that out. Perfect. Put that in our cooling tray. Let that cool down. And that is a splice. So I gave that about, about a minute. And it's cooled off. And there we are. Basically brand new. So let's test it. Let me go back to red laser. And on. Check it out. That's awesome. So yeah, I am super impressed with this thing. Like I've used one other one and it's a very high end one. It works, but this one works just as well. Plus this one has that little tug function to make sure that the fiber is actually spliced well because you could actually have a connection, maybe it's okay. But if you give a little tug, it breaks, that's no good. This thing has a ton of features on it that the other one, the higher end one didn't have. And plus that splice, I mean, you could see just by looking at the screen, like it tells you exactly what that thing looks like. This is a very, very nice high end splicer. So I am super happy with that. That is awesome.